Hey Pocket Sweet Pro, are you looking to take some things off of your plate and have your clients be able to just easily schedule themselves for services that you provide? Well, if so, it's really important that you get your scheduling just right. We have tons of different uh, settings and features that you need to, to set up um, in order to make it work properly for you so that you're not double booked and you are only being booked exactly when you want to. So if that sounds like you, if you would like your clients to self-serve, then it's important that you get your scheduling just right. In this video, we'll cover just that. So the first thing you're gonna do is tap on settings in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And then we are going to scroll almost all the way down um, to the section that says scheduling and tap on scheduling. So we're gonna talk about each one of these features individually as they are all super important. Um, requires credit card um, is probably one of the most important things that you can do as a service-based business owner, right? You do have the option to not require a card at all, which we don't recommend, but there is that option. There is the option to require a card only if priced, meaning if the client is selecting a service that does cost money. Um, some of our pros will have services that are free, such as an initial consultation or some sort of assessment, right, and that they don't charge for. So only if priced, if you were, select, were to select only if priced, then um, what that would do is the clients that selected are only scheduling you for that free initial consultation, they wouldn't be required to um, put a card on file, but everybody else would. And then always means always, no matter what they're booking, um, free or not free, they need to put a card on file. Now we definitely recommend that you set your preferences either to always or only if priced. And the reason is um, because this is a safety net for you, okay? There is no way to enforce a cancellation policy if we do not have a card on file. So um, it kind of works like a double-edged sword here. If you um, put don't require, but then you set a cancellation policy with a fee, the system will request that your clients put, on a, put a card on file. Because like I mentioned, there's no way to enforce the cancellation policy otherwise. Um, so you don't have to enforce the cancellation policy. It's just there, like I said, as a safety net, right? In case you need it. Um, also, when clients put their card on file, it does not mean that their card is going to be charged. Okay. Having a card on file simply keeps it in place there for that appointment until it's time to process either because they they need to pay you because they came in or you need to cancel it and either enforce or override the policy because they no showed or late canceled. Okay. So it's just holding it there. The only time your client's cards will be charged is if number one, they're picking something that is paid for upfront, like packages, okay, to initiate a subscription. The card needs to be charged um, if they're purchasing a gift certificate. So all these things that are paid for upfront, um, um, series classes, um, uh, open enrollment classes. But when things such as single sessions or drop-in classes, things that are not paid for upfront, the card will not be charged at the time of booking. Okay. The other, the other um, time that your client's card will be charged is if you set a deposit on things that aren't paid for upfront. So if you set a deposit or they're paid for upfront, your cards will be requested and your clients will have to be, you know, charged the time of that. But um, this is more mostly for those services that number one, don't have um, deposits or aren't paid for upfront. Um, you know, will you choose to request a card or not? Okay, confirmation status. How do you want your um, appointments to be confirmed? Okay, so the options are always co already confirmed, which means uh, when a client goes on your booking page, right, they're gonna see your um, book now button, they'll see your services, they'll select one, they'll see your dates, and then your times available. Um, once they select it, they're going to get a message that says, Hey, congratulations, your appointment. We'll see you on, you know, X, Y, Z date at such a time. So it's in black and white. If you select already confirmed, 
However, if you like to gatekeep a little bit more on your um, calendar and kind of just have your eyes on every request and make sure that it's okay, just as an extra, an extra checkpoint, you can always set it to requires confirmation. When you set it to requires confirmation, your clients will see the time and date, they'll select it, but then they will get a message that says, thank you, your um, appointment has been requested. Um, it then requires credit card. They will, um, it, it will be almost just like the already confirmed, only the way that they confirm is by entering a card on file. Okay, so just wanted to kind of show you too what that looks like depending on which option you select on your home dashboard or on your home screen. If you tap home and you will see a banner that says booking requests if you selected the requires confirmation status, okay? It requires confirmation means people are going to request bookings that you will then have to and like go in and tap confirm to confirm the appointments, okay? If you have it set, so even if you have it set to requires confirmation, once you confirm it, then it'll move from the require the requested bookings to actual upcoming bookings. Okay? Now, the actual upcoming bookings you'll have if number 1, you you have it set to requires confirmation and you confirm. Or number two, you have it set to already confirmed. If you have it set to already confirmed, they'll only appear here, okay? Another thing is on your calendar, if you have your confirmation status set to already confirmed, or once those appointments are confirmed, they'll, they'll appear like this, like Kenneth, like John, like Mary on your calendar, where, they're, where there's just the client name and what they've booked. Um, however, the ones, the appointments that have not been confirmed yet are gonna show up like this, like Mary Jones, where there is a red word, um, the word pending is written in red next to the appointment. You'll have to go in there and tap and confirm. So you can actually do it from your calendar um, or you can confirm right from booking requests. Either way would work. Um, but just so you know what that looks like um, in your uh, account, what the different choices kind of show up like. Okay, so that's confirmation status. The next one is time zone. That's pretty straightforward. Select the time zone that you do business in. Um, my hours, this is your business hours. When are you working? What time do you wanna see your first client? What time do you wanna be walking out the door? That's what these time periods um, are. So it's not, you know, hey, it's 7.30, the last appointment that I'm taking. No, that is when you are walking out the door. So if I'm your client and I went to go book you for a two hour service, and this was your schedule, the last availability that I'll be able to see, if it wasn't taken already, would be a 5.30 appointment, okay? To account for the two hours that I'm gonna be with you. Um, so make sure you set your, uh, you know, dates and times. You can always toggle dates off um, when, you, when you're off and then toggle them on. Um, double booking is a very, very uh, small use case. Usually people don't uh, do double booking. It is an option if you are okay with more than one client booking you um, at the same time. Um, you know, different businesses um, may allow it, um, depending on your business model. And then there's clients can't book beyond. So clients can't book beyond is great. It actually uh, defaults to no limit. Um, which means if your clients um, want to look at your calendar and see, you know, and book you in 2024 or 2025 or, you know, a year that hasn't come yet, you can, they can absolutely do that. Um, if uh, you don't like that idea, if you like to kind of uh, keep your calendar kind of, you know, not so far in the future, you can always limit how much visibility they have. Um, so you can uh, select three months, for example, and they'll only see your calendar three months um, in the future at any given point. Okay, um, so that is clients can't book beyond. So the next option is buffer time. So buffer time is how much time between appointments do you need to prepare for the next one? Okay, um, so are you traveling across town to perhaps go to your clients uh, where they live? Um, then maybe you need 35, 40 minutes, right? To drive there, to pack up your stuff and to, and to get there. Um, maybe you work in a salon where you are just basically, um, you know, changing the sheets 
or you know getting the seat ready and you don't need it up 30 minutes 45 minutes you can change that too so any kind of in between appointment prep time that you need to just kind of gather yourself for your next client that's what buffer time is okay now flex time let's talk about flex time so flex time has to do with the start times of your appointment okay when can your clients select to come see you um, if it says no flex that means there's not a lot of flexibility right it's going to be determined upon the duration of the service that they selected so what do I mean well if I selected a service that's 15 minutes long I'll have start times that I can pick from every 15 minutes so if you work 9 to 5 I can come see you at 9, at 9.15, at 9.30, at 9.45, any of those times. Okay, so that's no flex. Now, if I picked a, dura a service that's an hour and a half long, I would only be able to, to see you um, at either 9 or 10.30 or 12. It would be kind of in increments of the duration of one hour and a half, okay, which is a service I selected. So that's no flex. No flex plus buffer is exactly what I just explained and, and it will take into account the buffer time if you've selected one. So I've selected a buffer time of 30 minutes, for example. If I have no flex plus buffer and I selected a, a service that is an hour and 30 minutes long, one hour and 30 minutes plus the 30 minute buffer, that's two hours. So if you have no flex plus buffer and I'm your client, I selected a, a one and a half hour uh, service with a 30 minute bu buffer, I would see your availability in increments of two hours. So I could come in at nine, I could come in at 11, I could come in at one or at three or at five. Okay, so that's the no flex and the no flex plus buffer. Now the flex, the flex options are perhaps the, the more popular ones that we've seen. Um, this kind of standardizes it. So it basically, if you pick a Flex 10, no matter which service your client selected, they will always see your availability in increments of 10 minutes. So they'll be able to really have flexibility in, in terms of when they see you. Is it 9? Is it 9.10? Is it 9.20? 9.30? Um, if you pick nine, a Flex of 15 it will be 9 9 15 9 30 9 45 flex 20 will be every 20 minutes so on and so forth so that just makes it standard now if at any point you need kind of a refresher or you want to read you can always tap on the learn more learn more is a button that if you tap on it, it just opens up an explanation they are littered throughout the app there's lots of good information there so just a pro tip if you're in a section that has that box with the learn more tap on it and learn because it really is good stuff um, but that is your scheduling um, if you get this part right sharing your booking link is a no-brainer with your with your clients um, I will show you also in a different another video how to set blocks on your calendar so you can also not worry about you know your lunch or your kids pick up time being affected by your clients just being able to self-serve so but this is the start this is um, basically the first thing that we do to make sure that our clients can serve themselves. I hope you got some value of it um, and I will see you at the next one.